Hey there, I'm Soham and in this video, we're going to learn how to run a basic Java Maven project from the command line. So the reason I made this video is because most people, when they start learning Java, they normally develop and run their Java code using an IDE, which is an integrated development environment like Eclipse or IntelliJ. This is all great, but when you use these IDEs, you normally don't really know what's going on under the hood. So by running it through the command line, I think you'd be able to have a better idea on what's going on under the hood and how you can run a Java application without using an IDE like Eclipse or IntelliJ. And this will also give you a better idea of how Java runs your code in general. So in this video, we're going to create a new Maven project. We'll compile package and and execute our Java code from an executable jar file. We'll see how we can run some unit tests for our code. And we'll also look at how you can add external dependencies and libraries to your code. So let's start by creating a new Maven project. So if you haven't already, you'll need to install OpenJDK on your system. You can do that by going to the OpenJDK website. I'll link that here as well. After this, you can install Maven again through their installation page on their website. Now, once you have all this installed, we can create a new project folder using the maven command. So you can see the command that I've typed here. Here we're generating a new archetype. The group ID and artifact ID will basically represent the package name of our application. And the archetype artifact ID here will tell Maven what type of project you want to start with. So Maven archetype quick start is a predefined template and it's also the simplest one. So we can start with that. I've used a group ID corresponding to my website domain. You can replace this with your own choice. Now we can see that this will generate a new project folder and we can run this command to see the folder structure. So in our app.java file, we can add some simple code that just prints hello world when run. So this is how our code looks. And now let's look at how we can compile and package this code into a jar file. Now, before running a Java application in production, we need to compile the Java code into bytecode that can be run on the JVM. If we have multiple classes and folders, which we most likely will, we have to package the compiled code into a common format. The most common format used for this purpose is a jar file. So we can run the mvn package command, which compiles all the code and compresses it into a jar file. So here our jar file is called mvn example snapshot.jar. And this jar file is a final output that can be executed by the Java virtual machine. However, we still have to perform some additional steps before we can run our code. Let's see the problem here. We can use the Java command to execute our jar file like so, specifying the location of the jar file that we just compiled. But if we run this now, we'll get this error that says that there's no main manifest attribute. This is because the jar file doesn't know the entry point of the application. And so it has no idea where the main method is. This is where the Maven jar plugin comes in. So this plugin gives us additional capabilities to build jar files, including the ability for us to specify the entry point. Now we can add the following configuration as a child of the build tag in our pom.xml file. So here we are including the Maven jar plugin and within the jar plugins configuration, we're specifying that we want to use the main method within the app class. Now we can rebuild the project again by running mvn clean package. The clean subcommand removes previous artifacts in the target directory, such as the previous stale jar file. Now we can try running the java-jar command again, and this will give us the output like we expect. Now to organize our code better, we can add more classes to our project. In fact, almost any Java project you work with will almost certainly have multiple classes and packages. These will be compiled and packaged along with the rest of the code automatically. To illustrate, let's create a new class called calculator. And this class will have a single static method to add two integers. We can now use this class within our app class. So now we will print hello world along with the result of the add method. When we compile this into a jar file, the calculator and app classes will both be present as individual files. And through the manifest, we will know that the main method is contained within the app class. All right, so that's about it. That's all you need to run a simple Java program using the command line. However, in your development workflow, you will have other tasks as well, like running unit tests and adding external dependencies. 
Doing these in the command line is super easy as well. Let's start by seeing how we can run unit tests. By convention, all tests reside within the source slash test directory. Let's see an example by creating a unit test for the calculator.add method within the calculator test.java file. Over here, we are using the JUnit library for testing and we have created a test method that makes an assertion to test the calculator.add method. We've added a test annotation here to specify that this is a test method. By default, Default, the Maven project folder comes bundled with the JUnit library for running unit tests. So to run the tests, we can just run the MVN test command. This will run all the tests and tell us how many passed and failed and give us more information about the failed tests. In our case, if we run the tests, we will get the following output that shows us that our tests have passed. We can make a small change here to see what happens if the test fails. Now if we run the tests again, we will get some additional information about the failed tests. When we ran the MVN test command previously, we ran all the tests in the project. However, as our project grows, this quickly becomes unscalable. We can run a single test class or method by specifying the class name or method name as arguments to the MVN test command. For example, let's say we had another test class called failed test in the same test package. Now this class contains a single test which always fails. Now if we only want to run tests in the calculator test.java file and not in the failed test.java file, we can do this by specifying the class name as as an argument to the MVN test command. This will run all test methods within the calculator test class and ignore all other classes. We can do this at the method level as well. So let's say we add a new test method called should add negative values. Here we check that adding minus one to minus one gives us minus two. If we only want to test this single method, we can specify that using the hash notation. Isolating tests in this way can be useful when debugging, since running all the tests all the time can be time consuming and make it harder to find the issue when a test fails. Now let's take a look at how to add external dependencies and libraries and package them within our jar file. Most applications need external libraries to implement common functionality. Maven allows us to install these dependencies by specifying them in our pom.xml file. For this example, let's install the cowsay library, which will display our output as a quote from a friendly cartoon figure of a cow on the terminal. First, we have to add cowsay as a dependency in our pom.xml file. You can get the exact group ID and artifact ID by searching for this library in any of the repositories. The most popular repository is Maven Central, where you can search for the libraries and their artifact IDs. Now we can import the cowsay class from the library and use the say method to get the string that we want to print. Now finally we can print the output string. However, there's a problem here as well. If we recompile our code and try to run the application now, we will get an error saying that the cowsay class is not found. This happens because by default, Maven doesn't bundle the dependency class files along with the application code. To enable this, we can install another plugin called the Maven assembly plugin. This plugin is used to include all of our application's dependencies into the jar file as well. This increases the jar file's overall size, but ensures that we can run it as a standard alone executable using the java jar command. Let's add the maven assembly plugin in the pom.xml build definition just after the maven jar plugin. These options will more or less be fixed and you just have to specify your main class similar to the one specified in the jar plugin. To assemble our jar file along with dependencies, we can run the assembly single goal. When running this command, we'll get a new jar file in the target directory that you can run using the java jar command. And now we can see that our output is shown as a quote from the cow. So that about wraps it up for this video. We saw how we can create a new project from scratch, add some Java code of our own and package our code into a jar file. We also looked at how we can run unit tests and add external libraries to our project. For most cases, this should be enough to run your own production grade applications. And the best part is you can develop this using any text editor you want and not just using an IDE. Even if you do use an IDE, I feel like it's still useful to know how all of this runs on the command line so you can get a better lower level understanding and more control over how your application is built and executed. For example, if you want to add some automation, you can now do so using the command line as well. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.